Hi there! For this video, I will be showing you the step-by-step -step process of how I created my churn analysis report starting from importing, transforming, and visualizing the data up until the publishing of the report to Power BI service. So if you're ready, let's begin. The first thing that we have to do is to open Power BI Desktop. From there, we have to click on Get Data. Since our data is an Excel file, we will choose the Excel workbook to connect with. And after that, we will select the file that we want to open. Upon loading the file, we select the page that we want to include and then click on Transform Data. The Power Query Editor window should open for us to transform the data. First thing, we might want to rename the sheet that we have as we will be using it later on for a more understandable expression. We should have familiarized ourselves with the columns of the sheet so that we may know what needs to be done. The first thing that we will do is to go to the payment method column and see the list of values that is here. For this column, you want to keep only the payment method itself and put the payment mode on a separate one. What we are going to do is to go to the transform tab and click on replace values. We type in the value that we want to change, open the advanced options, and tick match entire cell contents. We have two values that we want to change. After that, we would want to make the case uniform, so still highlighting the payment method, we click on Format under the Transform tab and choose Capitalize each word. Now we want to add the Payment Mode column to know whether the payment method is automatic or manual. We can do this by going to the Add Column tab and clicking on Conditional Column. The column name will be Payment Mode and the conditions will be based on what is manual or automatic. In this case, electronic check and mail check are manual modes of payment. Thus, if the payment mode is electronic check. Then the output should be manual. The same goes for mail check. Other than that, or else, the output will be automatic. As we can see, the payment mode column is now created based on the value of the payment method. 
For the next one, we also want to know whether the customer is a VIP or not based on their monthly charge. So let us assume that having a monthly charge of $69.5 will make the customer a VIP. We create another conditional column named VIP customer. And following the previous steps that we have done, if the customer's monthly charge is greater than or equal to $69.5, then the output will be yes. Otherwise, the output will be no. The column is now created based on the customer's monthly charges. Now we should change the data type to text since the added columns have text values. We can do this by going to the transform tab and clicking on data type. Let us change it to text. The same goes for the VIP customer column. Now, we can notice that there are values such as no phone service and no internet service on the different services offered, starting from the phone service column until the streaming movies column. This can be simplified by just replacing it with no since they are not availing of that service. Let us first change the values on the multiple lines column. Since some customers do not have phone service, they do not have multiple lines. And we can see the no internet service on different columns after the internet service. We can select multiple adjacent columns to replace values from by clicking on the first column, which is online security, press shift, and click on the last column of choice which is streaming movies. Let us re replace no internet service with no. We can now go to the home tab and click on close and apply. This ensures that our data transformation will be saved. However, we also want to know how many services are availed by the customers. So we should count the columns per row that do not have no as their values. We can do that by going to the data view by clicking on the second one on the left side of our screen. We will go to the table tools tab and click on new column. We will name this calculated column as Total services subscribed. 
and we are going to insert the following lines. This is why we replaced the sheet name earlier because we want to be clear with what sheet and column we are using for counting. We name the variable as count not no so that it is clear that we are counting the columns not containing no. From these columns, we filter out those that do not contain no and return the count for each row afterwards. Now we have a calculated column that mentions how many services are the customer subscribed to. Lastly, for this process, we are going to create a quick measure to know the total number of churn customers that the company has. Let us right click on the name of the sheet, click quick measure, and in this calculation, we are going to choose filtered values. We need to count the number of customers who have yes as their value for the churn column. So for our base value, we will have the customer ID. And for our filter, we are going to insert the churn where churn is equal to yes. We will rename this measure as churn customers. We are also creating a new measure for churn rate.
by dividing the churned customers by the number of total customers. And we're going to change its type to percentage. We can now proceed with the more interesting part, visualizing our data. The first thing that I want to do for visualization is to prepare my interface where the visuals will be placed. So first, click on the blank canvas and go to the visualization screen. Click on the format icon for formatting. Go to the page background and set the transparency to zero. Let us also rename the page as demographics, which will be something that we will look at on our first page for our churn analysis. Going back to the visualization screen, we would also want a custom size for our canvas for accommodating more visual elements. So, going to page size, we are going to set the type to custom and set the height to 820 pixels. Now, we want to insert our containers for the different elements. Let us go to the insert tab and then shapes. We want to use rectangles for our containers. Let's extend it to the sides and remove the fill and the outline of the shape by clicking it and going to the visualization screen on the right side. Temporarily, we can use any background color just to distinguish this shape from the other shapes that we will be using later on. But for simplicity, we will be using shades of white. And this will be for our header. We will copy the rectangle, increase its size, and change the background color. This will be the container for our buttons. Lastly, let us copy the rectangle again, change its size, and use white color for this one. This will be the container for our visuals. And in this last shape, let us turn on shadow for dimensions and change the preset to bottom only. For a more organized appearance, let us edit the dimensions of the shapes. For our header, let's change the height to 75 and for the second container let's change the height to 270 and for the last one 
let's set the height to 575 and the width to 1200. Remember, these can be adjusted by clicking on each shape and going to General on the Visualizations pane. On the Format, Shape option when you click these shapes. After this, we are going to insert four blank buttons as we will be using four pages for our report. These buttons can also be found on the Insert tab and Buttons. Let us copy and paste the shapes and adjust their dimensions with height with 105 for their height and for the width they should have 250. Now let us arrange their positions on the canvas. We are going to put at the center the visuals container and change its Y position to 220. For the buttons, let's put them at 95. Let us also align the buttons and distribute them horizontally by clicking on them, going to the Format tab, and using the Align function. First, let's align them to top. And then after that, we would distribute them horizontally for equal spacing. Now let's add a small triangle for connecting between the buttons and the container of the visuals. We are going to remove its outline and change the fill color to white. Then, let us change the colors of the containers. For the header, I will be using a dark blue color with the hex code 25 2C14 and for the buttons container 
I will be using one for one. After this, I will now import the image that I will be using for the header and add the title of the report by using a text box, which can also be found on the insert tab. So first, I am going to insert a photo of a hamburger icon. Align it to Then we are going to add a text box for our title, which is Customer Churn Analysis. Let us use for the font the HOMA and 32 for the font size. And let's make it bold. We will remove the background and change the font color to white. Then to align it with the menu for the hamburger, we will put its Y position to 5. Going on to the buttons, we will select all the buttons by holding shift and clicking each of them. Turning on fill and changing the transparency to zero. After that, we are going to add an image to each of these buttons by still using the fill option and adding an image. So first, Then we are going to add a title for each of these. I'm going to use Tahoma as well for the font and a white color. We do this by turning on button text typing in the title and aligning it at center bottom.
Now we are going to remove the outline weight. But and we are going to change the round edges to eight. Lastly, we are going to change the fill color of the buttons the same to the color of the container. Let us now add and format the visual elements. The first thing that we need to add will be the cards. For the first card, we are going to show the total number of customers by adding the customer ID into the field of the card. and changing it to count instead. Next, we format it by changing the size of the card to 376 by 100. Changing the font to Arial black and the font size to 15 and changing the font of the category label into Tahoma 12. We will also be adding a light color of border and changing its radius to 5 and then let's play with the shadow by changing the preset to custom and modifying the attributes according to your like it. We're just playing with the shadows here. Let's copy and paste the button and align them for a cleaner look. We will be changing the second card into the total number of churned customers, which is this one. And the third one into the churn rate. 
let's change the name of the field to total number of customers. After we're done with the cards, we'll be putting a pie chart to visualize better the churn customers versus the active ones. And then stack column charts for each of the categories for demographics. This allows us to compare the difference between the number of people for that category as well as the number of churn versus active customers specifically for that. For the pie chart, I will turn off the... We are going to put first the for the pie chart. We'll be using churn for the values. I mean for the legend. And then the count of churn for the values. We will turn off the legend for this one and show the category and percent total in our detail label and of course since I really like the home one, we're going to use that as, a, as our font. Lastly, let's change the title to churn distribution instead. For the column charts, we have the legend put at the top center, but first we need to fill out the fields. We're going to put partner on the axis and churn for the legend and value. Here we'll have the legend put on the top center We will remove the title for the y-axis. And change the title for all the chart as a whole. So we're going to change it to churn distribution by, let's say, partner. And then let's arrange the alignment. So I lost the font for this one. Let's change the data color to a more pleasing one. 
So for no, you're going to use 194A50, which is a dark green and for yes. We are going to use FFA62. There you go. And the same goes for here. And we are going to copy and paste the table for a faster Let's change the partner to senior citizen and as well as the title. And this one by Dependents. We need to uh, format the chart so that it will fit these container and after that it should look like this one let's stop there for a while and add the filters add another rectangle on top of the buttons and across the canvas Let us remove the fill and the weight of the line. And this becomes the container for the slicers. I'm going to choose for the background a color of blue here and then Make the transparency to at least five. And I'm going to add a description of the churn analysis later into this container, as well as the different slicers that we have. The payment mode, the payment method, and the type of contract. We're going to add some slicers. For this slicer, I am going to add the payment mode, then adjust the size. And we will be removing its background and we'll be adding a background color 
to the items drop down list. Let's pick a lighter shade of blue. And let's change this to drop down. Let's also change the font of the slicer header to white so that it can easily be seen. Let's copy and paste the slicer so that we can also accommodate the payment mode as well as the type of contract. And let's add a little something here, churn description. So for example, we have this one. Now we go to adding a an image for the X mark for closing this container. We're going to add an image, which is the X mark. We we'll adjust the size and put it right here. And then after that, we need to go to the view tab and click on bookmarks and selections so first we need to select all the elements in this container which is this place here Slicers, text, and the container itself. Let us group it using format tab. And we need the X to pop out. Now we are going to add a bookmark that shows the slicers within the containers upon clicking this hamburger. Let us name it Churn Filters. Now 
And after that, we need to We need to hide all these elements We need to hide all these elements image and group one before adding another filter which we can call Turn height filters. So we can see that the filters should show whenever this one is clicked, and the filters should be hidden when this one is clicked. The next step is to assign our bookmarks to our images. By clicking on this image of the hamburger, there will be an action on the format image called action. We should turn this on and then change the type to bookmark and the bookmark should show the filters for the tooltip we can type that this button shows the filters and this one shows a tooltip which says show filters. We are also going to do that with the X mark that whenever we click the X mark, these filters and the container will also be closed. So, as we can see, when we click this one, the filters will be hidden, and whenever we click this, the filters show. This will need some more revisions on its appearance, but the appearance will be up to you as a user. For the succeeding pages, we may duplicate the present page instead of having to redo everything all over again. So for the second page, we are going to change all the visual elements here to something that will relate to the payments and tenure. And for the shape, we're going to transfer it here. And let's rename this, for example, payments. And let's also put an action to these buttons that whenever we, whenever we are in the Payments and Tenure page, whenever we click the Demographics button, there will be an action, a page navigation, that will bring us back to the Demographics page. So, the here we're currently in the payments and tenure page, but when we click on the demographics, we will be redirected back here. And then lastly, 
we want to create a hover effect for these buttons. So let's add, let's just add an action here for page navigation. And we're going to change the field transparency of these in its default state to 80%. As well as the bottom text to a gray one. So changing it to on hover, we want it to show as white as well as here. So what happens is that whenever we hover through these buttons, we can see that the buttons show more brightly as compared to the other buttons. But for the active page, we want it to always be active and bright. So for the default state, we are going to bring it back to white as well as for the fill, we're going to reduce its transparency to zero. So as an active page, the button is bright as compared to the other buttons, but when hovered, it seems like a menu that you can choose from. After adding the other elements and formatting their appearance, this will be the final output of the report. We click here and we get to the payments and tenure page. We click here, we get to the VIPs page. We click here, we go to the services page. And the same goes for the others. And when we click on the hamburger, we can see a container that contains a description of what customer return is and what customer churn analysis is and the filters that is synced through all the other pages. For example, this one, automatic manual. You can also do with bank transfer, credit card, and when we click the X button, the container closes. And after this, we can now publish it to Power BI service. So I am going to choose my workspace select and when we go to power bi service
can see our report on the cloud. I'm clicking here. It has the same function as we had in Power BI Desktop. But we can do further visualizations here. And that will be all for the how-to of Power BI. Thank you.